All right. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for joining me today um, to view this uh, demonstration of Layamos. This is our first time giving this presentation. We've done a series of other Layamos webinars throughout the year. So I'm excited to have you join us today. All right, my name is Alicia Suskin. I'm just going to get started with some introductions. I'm a project manager here at ProLiteracy, and I oversee the product management and strategy of Lamos. Um, I'm also going to be monitoring any questions that you might have during the presentation today. Then I'd also like to introduce you to Patty Felidon, who is um, ProLiteracy's professional development and online course designer, and she also provides Lamos customers customer support to current and potential programs that use the product. So in this webinar, we're going to start with a brief overview of what Layamos is. If you've attended any of our other Layamos webinars, some of this information uh, may not be new to you, um, but we're just quickly going to go over um, just some of the basics just to make sure we want to make sure everyone attending is aware of what the product is. Um, and then we'll follow up with rec recruitment tips and implementation strategies that can help you implement Layamos at your local program. Patty will be sharing examples of how programs are currently using Layamos. Um, and then we will have time for question and answers at the end of the presentation to answer anything, um, any type of questions you may have. Um, so at any time during the presentation, feel free to type your questions in the chat box. Um, and then, because everyone always asks, you will be receiving a recording of this presentation um, in your email after the presentation is uh, finished. All right. Uh, to get things started, I'm just going to give a quick poll. I just, Patty and I just want to get an idea of who is attending today's presentation and what your familiarity is with Layamos. So you should see a poll um, box pop up on your screen. If you can just uh, take a second to answer that, that'd be great. Okay, we're still waiting on a few other people to answer the poll, so I'll just give a couple more seconds and then um, we'll get started with the presentation. Okay, great. So um, most of you answered. It looks like 25% of you um, are familiar with Layamos and 71% of you are not. So that's great. We have a lot of new people attending. 4% um, of you weren't sure. So uh, this presentation should give you, um, be able to answer that question for you. Um, so I'm going to start by giving a brief overview of what Layamos is. Um, I'm just going to touch on it since we have given several other presentations on what, like diving more into how the product works and how it was developed. Um, but since 1991, Layamos was created to address the pressing need for basic Spanish literacy instruction among the Latino community. As of December 2017, ProLiteracy became the home of Layamos with a focus on expanding it throughout the United States and Latin American cultures. It had originally been developed by a smaller organization in California that saw the need for this product in their own community. Um, but we're excited to be able to offer it um, to our network of member programs and um, literacy providers throughout the United States and other countries. Data shows that illiteracy exists in the United States and over 1.6 million Spanish-speaking adults in the United States cannot read or write in any language. 
Leamos is for adults who have little to no formal education, um, about two years or less, and for individuals who cannot read or write in their native language, Spanish. Um, and although the course was designed for adults, we have succe seen success in middle and high school students um, taking and completing Leamos as well. I'm now gonna turn it over to Patty, who's gonna share who's using Leamos and why they've decided to implement Leamos into their programming. Thank you, Alicia. Hey, Patty, can you mute your phone? We're having some. Okay. Yes, I'm ready. Okay. okay. Can everyone hear me? Can you hear me, Alicia? Yeah, I can hear you now. So sorry about that. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, perfect. I'm sorry about that. So, hello, everyone. Um, I just want to show you a short list of institutions that are currently using Leamos. Um, as you can see here on my screen, we do have um, public library systems. We have nonprofit organizations, adult school districts, high schools, community colleges, and a vocational training agency that are now using Leamos. They are all located throughout 17 states and in the countries of also Honduras and Nicaragua. Um, so some of these programs started um, using Leamos by asking themselves like a basic question. They asked themselves like, is there a need for Spanish literacy in the community? And some others didn't really ask themselves the question. They actually had people already knocking at their door um, with the urgent need for instruction. But one thing to keep in mind is to always talk with your community members and listen to their needs. In most cases, the basic literacy instructors for non-literate Spanish speaking adults are not reflected or documented on any type of surveys or focus groups or data that assesses a community. And unfortunately, this is an issue that it's invisible. On the slide, you can see a quote from a branch manager. Her name is Silvia Cisneros. When she first started at her branch in, in the Santa Monica Public Library, she did go out to the community and she did ask, what would you like for me to do? And as you can see, people really shared that they knew people that didn't know how to read in Spanish. So this is what mo moved her to implement and to start Leamos in her community. As you might already know, trying to find the potential Leamos students could be really challenging. The first step will be to discuss the Spanish literacy project with your internal staff, since many times they already know clients who need this resource. These individuals tend to shy away, so that's why it's hard to identify them. But what I want to do today is share with you a short list of signs that may help you um, identify them. Um, some might tell you that they forgot their glasses or wearing the wrong glasses, they cannot fill out the forms, or they will prefer to take the forms home to bring back later. Others will have someone else fill out forms for them. And in some cases, they will tell you directly that they never attended school and cannot read or write. And this last one usually happens when there's already a relationship built or established with, with those clients or people that you serve. And what's important is that once you identify them, you want to ask them if they're interested or if they would like to start learning how to read and write in Spanish. An important step is to train the staff because I can share with you that at the Alachua County Library District in Gainesville, Florida, what happened is that they had a student who had enrolled in the ESL class. And thanks to that ESL teacher that knew of that Leamos was also being offered at that same library, 
what she did is that once she noticed or interviewed the student, she realized she didn't know how to read and write in her basic language in Spanish. So she preferred her to start with Leamos first, and then she will be able to move to the ESL classes. And that is actually what happened. Um, the student recently graduated or completed the Leamos course, and it's now taking her ESL classes. So many times educating the people within your programs or libraries is really helpful because they will be your own referrals and recruitment. So, but here are some more recruitment tips that can help you to reach out um, to this population outside of your program. Once you already know that you want to be able to offer Leamos and you're looking for more students or would like to reach out to your community, um, even though your target are non-literate Spanish speaking adults, their grow, grown up children or relatives or friends can't, they're mostly offer and they hear about the course and they're the ones who encourage them to enroll. So it's important that you are able to put up flyers and distribute bilingual flyers because not only could be the Spanish community, but also those English speaking children that can find it somewhere and can give it to their family members. Um, we suggest to put it in public places like in grocery stores, community events, health clinics, and to share on social media. If you plan to promote at a very large scale, which has happened in California, at one point, if there was press releases sent out and there were radio stations that were contacted to broadcast public service announcements, these could be the different um, ways to recruit at a larger scale in your city. You can decide if you can if you want to reach out to the public or Lamos can always stay for your internal constituents um, that need Lamos. Once the community need for Spanish literacy has been established at your program, we have this um, Lamos implementation readiness checklist that can help you to now start preparing for the implementation process. I just want to let you know that at the end of the presentation, I'll be sharing with you my contact information. So if um, you would like to get a copy of this readiness checklist, um, please email me, let me know, and I can be more than happy to send it to you. Um, so once you have established that need, let's see, so you will have to, all these resources available for your program before you implement Lamo. So in the next slides, I will cover some information of each one of these components that are listed, and I'll give you examples for each one of them and how you can use Lamos at your program or implement Lamos. For personnel, I just want to remind you that Lamos lessons are delivered by a virtual instructor, and the implementation does not require a teacher who knows how to teach basic literacy. However, you will need to identify a paid staff member or a very faithful volunteer who will help you oversee the program and conduct the activities necessary to make it successful at your own site. And secondly, you will need to identify your Spanish speaking volunteers to work with the students and to provide them the help with logging into the course for the first time um, to help your students, encourage them in their progress, and to tutor them to do any of the activities or reinforcement of learning. And these could be your tutors or your facilitators. What I like most about the programs is that they offer the LAMOS is that they overcome any challenges you may have. We do suggest, where we strongly suggest that you do have those Spanish speaking volunteers that serve as tutors. But one of the programs, um, it's actually one of our pro-literacy members, um, Caroline House, they were in Connecticut, they were able to manage to run Leamos by having an English speaking tutor. She assists the student with the course. They're able to communicate even in English. The student understands the tutor and understands the instructions and the student is able to continue with the course. So the students feel very supported and has made great progress. 
So this is just an example of how some of these um, can be barriers, if you may say, can be taken as opportunities. And they have actually made LAMOS work at their own program. Uh, I want to mention another um, program example where, and this is a program called Above Grade Level. And the tutor is physically located in the country of Argentina. So the tutors in Argentina, um, this program provides tutoring services and all the tutoring happens to be online. This tutor is um, helping two Leamo students. I talked to her and she tells me that her students use Skype to connect. So by using Skype, she logs into the course for the students. She shares her screen and the students are able to repeat and review the Leamos lessons. And when it comes to the um, exercises and the different assessments, the student points out and says, which one will be the answer? And that's how the tutor clicks and helps the student move forward. It is working very well for them. So the tutors in Argentina, the students are in Washington state and they have been very successful. They have no issues. They're very happy with their progress and how the students are learning Leamos. So as you can see, there are a variety of ways to manage the staff and to manage tutors um, when it comes in helping LAM, um, providing Leamos. Now I'd like to talk about access. Since Leamos is web-based, there must be internet connection that it's available for the students in order to access the course. There is no need for any software installations. The only thing they need is to have the latest web browsers updated on the computer or um, laptop that they will use. And the course is really accessible by using computers, laptops, um, people use Chromebooks, tablets, and it's available on the smartphones as well. So note that the students, once the students can log into the course, they can also log in from home. So once they know how to do the login on their own, and if they have someone at home to provide some assistance, they can use it outside of your programs as well, as long as they, they are able to connect. It is really optional to provide headphones to the students. We really recommend headphones only when you are meeting with the students in an open place or in a public area. That way the sound, the volume of the course could be limited and use their headphones. I want to give you an example. Um, you can see that the Azusa City Library purchased Chromebooks and they started to use the loan program. Once they knew that the student was able to log in on their own, they actually, um, students would check out those Chromebooks and take them home and as long as they were able to find a place where they had the internet connection, they will go to public places or even at home. And that's how they were able to progress on their Leamos lessons. So now let's talk about logistics. Well, there are a variety of ways to implement Leamos. Um, it can follow a classroom setting it could, mostly it's used in a computer lab because they want to have access to those computers. And I can give you the example of how it was taught at the Allen Hancock College in Santa Maria, California. Um, this class was scheduled through the non-credit ESL community education department last semester. It was during their summer session and they had over 40 students. So now their issue was they didn't have enough computers. So now their next phase and their next plan is to get um, tablets to be able to um, have more than those 40 students that they're expecting um, for the next semester. So this course can be taught also as small groups. Um, one of the programs that are using that strategy of small groups is the Lanterman Regional Center in Los Angeles, California, where they teach LAMOs to small cohorts of students. They actually recruit five students at a time, and they have them um, together for a period of three months. 
A few of the large library systems have been able to match um, students with volunteers. So we have the large computer labs, we have the small groups um, with cohorts of five. They have only one tutor for all five. And when the systems are large enough, like the library systems, we have two systems. There are two in California, the Los Angeles Public Library and the Los Angeles County. What they do is that they're able to match the students with their volunteers to receive one-on-one -on -one tutoring until they complete the course. So each program sets their own schedule according to their room or how many people they can fit or how many volunteers are available. Um, the ideal time for students to spend on taking Leamos is really four to eight hours per week or at a minimum three to six hours per week. So at a minimum, once they complete these hours, they will approximately complete the course in an average of three to four months. It really takes them 150 hours to complete the entire course, which are 43 lessons. Um, the example I wanna share with you is go a little bit deeper on how of the three programs that I just mentioned, how they actually did their scheduling. The community college scheduled a class, like I said, during the summer, and they met for four days per week. Every day they will meet for two and a half hours during their eight week semester. So this really helped them um, to get the students started and ongoing with LAMOS. Even though some of them were not able to complete, they are, um, making sure that they have their own computer, but they are able to complete the course. But most of them were able to reach and complete the course during this time. The regional center, the Lanterman Regional Center, they schedule their classes two days out of the week. So for these small groups, they will meet two days a week, and they also set two and a half hours each day for the length of three months. So what happens to them, if because this is a self-paced course, so if any of the students that did not complete the course within those three months, some will follow for the next cohort. So that's how they're able to overlap into the next small group that, that will follow those three months. And they really, what they do is that they have an open enrollment policy. So as students come in, that's how they get them started. So if someone starts, later in the month when they decided to start the three month period, then they just roll over the student until they complete the course. They also, what they do is that another particular way of teaching animals is the way that a high school has managed in scheduling also the one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we have had high schools, for example, the Rochester School District enrolled a student in Washington and what they do in high schools or middle schools is that they dedicate a specific period during the day to meet with their English learner teacher and they help them review the course during the length of the semester. So they always have that one period dedicated every day to go in and review Leamo. So they also get the one-on-one -on -one tutoring and support that they need. Some things to just keep in mind is to, um, when it comes to supplies, storage, is to have a small place where to maintain these supplies. Um, sometimes students want to leave their notebook there or their pencils or their headphones. Um, but also one thing to keep in mind is that you want to have a space where to keep the copies of the workbooks. Many times, um, since this course does come with a workbook, uh, we recommend to print out those worksheets by module. So a lot of programs, what they do is that they have a little box and they have it separated in each folder with every module. So students already know either to ask the tutor for the worksheet or just to get up and know which space it has been allocated for the supplies and for the copies. And the last part of our implementation checklist is sustainability. And as with any other program, we know that there are costs to operate and to maintain Leamos. 
Aside from the subscription cost, which I'll talk about in the next slide, they are duplicating costs of the student workbooks. I can mention some supplies and even some marketing costs for flyers or put for the publishing of the flyers. Our recommendation is to seek for grant opportunities and community support as some of them, some of the current programs are doing. In case you need some ideas on how to communicate the benefits of LEAMOS to in terms of issues or that will resonate with the funders, I'm gonna share with you a couple of, of instances of how you can craft your message. Because LEAMOS is a pre-ESL course and just wanna share that in 2007, the California Department of Education and Adult Division approved LEAMOS to be used in California's adult schools as a primer course to prepare students to learn English. So if you're in California, you can use that as a leverage or even in other states, um, it can be also used and mentioned for any of your fund proposals. Leamos is a tool to improve children's academics um, success. And it was stated in a new release that improving mother's literacy skills may be, be the best way to boost the children's achievement. If a mother cannot read, her, her children is likely not to learn. And yet um, that mother becomes illiterate. She is, as she becomes literate, forgive me, as she becomes, as the mother becomes literate, she is able to support her children. It is um, also the third one, um, Leamos is an invitation to parent engagement. When parents cannot read, they generally avoid interacting at their children's schools or activities. The low self-esteem causes them to keep their distance. But once they learn how to read, they develop self-confidence and voice that carries them into the community. And LEAMOS is also used as a workforce development strategy. Many non-literate adult workers, in, they work in the cash economy. They could be gardeners, maids, janitors, just to mention a few. And they have less opportunities to move into the higher wage jobs without a foundation in literacy and without learning English. Um, these are just some examples, but I do want to let you know that in case you do need more assistance or help in identifying just a quick paragraph of those needs, you can also contact me and email me and I can share um, some of that with you that could be inserted into some of your proposals. So here are the subscriptions. I hope that now that you know how LEAMOS works and how you can recruit students and implement the course at your programs, you will be able to consider uh, bringing LEAMOS to your programs. A subscription, um, it, it includes a one-year access for every learner. It includes a PDF copy of the student workbook and the practice activities. It includes a tutor guide and the call support and training videos and handouts that you will need at each one of your programs. The pricing that is listed, um, if you were to purchase anywhere from one to four subscriptions, it will cost $60 per user. And just to highlight, if you notice anything above five subscriptions to up to 299, the cost is reduced um, to $55 per user. And the reason why it's per user is because each subscription is for one individual learner. They are assigned a unique username and it also tracks their progress. All the purchase subscriptions need to be used within 12 months. And in case, because we always get that question too, what if a learner does not return back to the program or, um, or they're not able to continue with LEAMOS, right? So what we have done is that because we understand that they are adult learners and they have so many commitments in life, we are able to replace subscriptions. 
but I just want to go over the benchmark. What we do is that we need to make sure that the learner will not return. So if the student has been inactive for more than 60 days, or if you let me know already that they will not return in case they moved and you already know that information, I can deactivate them and I can replace that subscription, but only if they were able to complete up to module one. Module one includes five lessons. So if a student takes all that first module and are, is able to complete five lessons or more, they really got a good um, instruction on how to read and write and all the basics um, with LAMO. So um, I just want to reiterate that. So I can replace a subscription. If the student has been inactive for more than 60 days or you know that they will not return and have completed up to module one. So that will be lessons one through five. And that's how I'll be able to replace that subscription. Um, and I will need to, it's not that they just use that subscription, but I need to deactivate one and create a new one for your new user since that will have the new information and the user account. So now we, um, that we have reached the end of this presentation and if, um, I'm not sure if you would like to get a chance or if you already had a chance to navigate through Leamos and what the lessons look like. Um, if you're interested, please send me an email. We are offering a three-week free trial of the course. Um, listed, you will see my email, my phone number, that I can create that account for you or for any potential students. So if you have some students that you would like to try out the course with, all I need is the first name, last name um, of, uh, like if it's an administrator or someone at your program that you want to evaluate LAMOs, all I need is first name, last name, and email. But if you do have a potential student, um, I, we understand that many of them do not have emails, so do not worry about email accounts because we don't use email to communicate with learners. All I need for the student to try out LAMOs will be the first name, last name, and the year of birth, if it's possible to get. Because we like to create really easy access or username and passwords for students. But you can request as many as you need, and this will be for three weeks that will be available to them or to you to evaluate the program. So now I think this will be our chance to answer any of your questions. I know Alicia will let me know if there has been questions typed. If you haven't had a chance to type your questions, you may do that now. And we'll be here um, to answer your questions. Thanks, Patty. Yeah, we haven't um, had any questions come through yet, but we'll just give everyone um, you know, a minute to type anything. If there is anything that you need clarification on that we covered today in the presentation, or maybe something that wasn't covered that you were hoping to find out, um, we'd be happy to answer that for you now. Um, yeah, so we will give everyone a second to send in any questions. And then I would also encourage you, um, you know, if offline you have any questions, maybe if you want to dive in, if any of those examples of how programs are using Leamos struck a chord with you and sounded like familiar to your own program, please reach out to Patty. Um, she can, you know, talk to you more in detail about how any of the things she discussed today works. Um, and set you up with one of those free trials. And I just wanted to add too that, like Alicia said, if any of these programs resonate with how you serve your clients or your constituents, um, I can always ask if you need a direct referral, I can check with them to see if I can share the information and let me know, maybe I can put you in contact and do um, have a direct, you know, referrals so you can talk more in details and how they're implementing the animals. We'll be very happy to do that upon their approvals. Okay. Um, Patty, uh, someone's asking, um, have you found that students are offended if they're put into this program rather than an ESL class? 
Um, so if the students are offended, if they're put into this program, many times they appreciate that because um, well, it depends. Some of them that they feel that they can do the ESL class, they will might find the verbal um, very easy, but if they need to start with writing in English in their ESL class, most of the time they're not offended. They're actually very grateful because they had no idea that Spanish literacy was even an option. So if you're able to, they're able to start Leamos, they're actually more grateful to be able to get that achievement, be able to read and write in their own language and be able to move on. And many times some of them, they pursue and they just wanna be in concurrent classes. So they're taking Leamos and maybe halfway down the course, they enroll in ESL because they wanna learn so bad that they all overlap and they're just, I mean, we recommend to take one first and then the other, but many of them want to concurrently enroll. So no, I have not found it to be offensive for them. They're, they don't get offended. Okay, great, thank you. And then we just got another question in, what is the highest level of literacy at which Leamos is still helpful? Um, Leamos is really helpful maybe if they even went up to third grade the most, second grade. I mean, it's really basic. It really teaches the basic, the foundational um, literacy that they will know. And we always, um, there is a course outline that if you're interested, I can share with you. Um, a lot of times we can test them out. So in case they did go to school, maybe third grade or three years into school, um, they, we can use the first module exercise to test them out. Maybe Leamos will be good for them starting halfway through the course. So not necessarily start from the beginning. So it's really based on assessment and how it will be helpful to them. I'm not Great, sure thank you. The question yeah, correctly, just, but. <laughs> yeah, um, okay, that's great. We have a few more questions coming in. Uh, Maria is wondering, what strategies do you use to keep the students um, to continue in the program, like to keep them motivated? To keep them motivated, um, I think that as adult learners, if first they enrolled in the class in the first place, the really big motivator for them is to just be able to learn how to read and write, to be able to set goals. So if one of their goals is to be able to write a letter to a family member, to be able to read prescriptions, to be able to read signs or to take a driving test and read, be able to read that handbook, that really becomes their own motivation for them. But other strategies that programs have used is that once they complete like a short cohort of classes, like the one I've mentioned that they meet every three months, they have a new group of people, gift cards are always, you know, always work that they'll receive with their certificate, a gift card for um, of some sort, um, that keeps them motivated. But really, as adult learners, they are really self-motivated to continue and to use Leamos. Great, thanks, Patty. Um, we'll give another second. Um, that was it for questions. So if you have any last minute questions, feel free to type them in. Um, I do, you know, want to also say thanks so much for attending today. Um, this is going to be our last webinar on Leamos for this calendar year, 2018. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, we did do several um, kind of, there were more demonstrations of the product and how it works and going through some of the modules and lessons and just the overall structure of the product. Um, if there's still an interest in that, we will continue to offer those um, periodically throughout 2019, as well as, you know, hopefully giving some more presentations on how programs are implementing it, strategies. If there's something that you would like to see us present on, please email us and let us know so that, you know, we're aware that there's 
a demand um, for people to, um, you know, people have the interest and they want to attend these presentations. Um, we had over 80 people register today, which is great. It shows us that even though we've been giving these almost every other month, um, people still aren't aware of what Leamos is or they want to learn more about it. So um, we appreciate you attending. Um, and with that, I did get one more question from Maria. Um, I think I can answer this, Patty, but let me know, you know, feel free to jump in if you have anything to add. And um, Maria asked, this is paid by the library. The student does not pay into the program. Is that correct? Um, and to answer your question, the programs that we mentioned today, yes, they, they do cover the cost of Leamos. Um, it would be at the discretion of your library or whatever, whatever type of uh, program or organization you operate. If you wanted your students to um, pay into it, I know that um, with all types of educational programming, um, people manage this in different ways. Um, some programs find success by having Students contribute a little bit of money um, that, that sometimes makes them feel a little bit more committed to finishing because they've put their own financial resources into it. Um, and then, but you know, that's at your discretion. Um, and then we have also had individuals purchase this so that they can um, take Leamos at home. Maybe they have a spouse or a friend or a a child that um, is, you know, helping them and encouraging them. Um, we've had people buy this for their parents or for a friend or a grandparent. So, um, you know, anyone is able to purchase it, um, but it would be at the discretion of your own program if you want your students to pay for it themselves or if you're going to cover the cost. And that is correct. Okay. Great. All right, you're welcome, Maria. Um, and so I have not um, gotten any more questions. So I guess we will end the presentation at that. But if you think of anything, um, Patty's email is up on the screen. So make sure you jot that down and uh, reach out if you have if you think of anything else that you'd like an answer to. We'd be happy to. Um, you know, help you out there. So I hope everyone has a great rest of their day and we hope to hear from you soon and set you up with a free trial if you're interested in um, exploring potentially using Leamos. Thanks everyone. Thank you everyone. I look forward to your emails. <laughs>